All right, first one. Mm. Julio Jones, Chris Godwin, they did not practice on Wednesday. It's looking like the Brashad Perryman, Russell Gage show as well, it's going to have to be, but they were limited too as well as Scotty Miller. And obviously we know Mike Evans is suspended. What are you doing with Tampa Bay? Starting Leonard Fournette everywhere I can. Yeah. I, I think in DFS, I think everything, I mean, we're going to get into this in my love hate list, but guess who makes my love list this week? Yeah, Lenny. Yeah, Uncle Lenny does. That is what us broadcasting professionals call foreshadowing. <laughs> yes. There you go. Just a little hint for you uh, young broadcasters out there trying to learn a few tips. That's what that's what that's called. Uh, yeah, but otherwise, like I mean, this is, we talked about this a little bit yesterday on the show. One of the lowest total games on the slate, under 42, I believe. Betm Jim has it currently at 41 and a half. This is Aaron Rodgers against Tom Brady. Yeah. And we're at 41 and a half. Yeah. You've got two teams that just. For, for a variety of reasons, have not been able to move the ball through the air. Brady has just two touchdown passes through two games. He's been beat up in the in the backfield because of the offensive line issues. And now no Chris Godwin, no Mike Evans due to his suspension. We expect Chris Godwin. I should say he hasn't officially been ruled out. But we don't expect – highly unlikely Chris Godwin plays. We know Mike Evans won't because of the suspension. We don't know about Julio. We don't know yet about Julio Jones. Feels like he's 50-50. But yeah. to your point – we're looking at Russell Gage. We're looking at Brashad Perriman. Um, Cole Beasley, Josh Scott there. Maybe they activate him, but it's probably like, you know, some Scotty Miller and, and those types. I, I don't know. I mean, like, if there's a positive to Russell Gage here, it's that he ran a route on 64% of the offensive snaps. He, had, he was second on the team targets. If the negative is, is that he still was wide receiver 59 last week. Yeah. Yeah, uh, this is not going to be the NFC Championship game of uh, a couple years ago when uh, it was Brady throwing bombs down the field in the first half. Uh, this is going to be a game of a lot of defense. The total now, if you look at MGM, they've got it at 42 flat, ticking up a bit. But Tampa okay. Bay are all the way down to minus one point favorites against Green Bay. So I, it's going to be a lot of defense in this game. To me, this is, this is a game where you are starting Leonard Fournette, you are starting A.J. Dillon, you are starting Aaron Jones. And after that... Okay. You know, I, I don't love Aaron uh, Alan Lazard on the other side of the ball here. Carlton Davis, Jamel Dean have played really good defense for the Buccaneers. Again, we expect – I think Vegas has this right. I think the guys at MGM have this right. This is – you know, whether it's – it's been going back and forth between 42 and 41 and a half, 41, but it, we don't expect a ton of fireworks here. If you want to take an, oh, by the way, flyer on Perryman to get one deep, okay, fine. But uh, I am uh, – I'm avoiding the passing games. Rodgers and Brady both outside my top ten. One of them – makes the hate list coming up a little bit later uh, in the show. Incredible that a Tom Brady-Aaron Rodgers game is six points below the average total in the NFL, but it makes sense with who is out. Now, another game with a low total, Dallas, New York Mm. on Monday night. That total is 39 right now. Cooper Rush, Daniel Jones, (laughs) ESPN. (laughs) I feel for my old friends at ESPN. I just, I feel that, you know, at the beginning of the year, that probably looked like a good game. And now it's, uh, the Giants are 2-0. There you go. The 2-0 they, they Giants against Dak Prescott and Micah Parsons, but Dak Prescott Damn, is uh, not, not there. there. Now, Michael yeah. Gallup, in good news for the game yeah. and the prospects of the over, potentially, appears to be on track for some reps in week three. He is practicing full slate of practice reps. What are you doing with Michael Gallup this week? I'm seeing if he's available in my league, and I'm picking him up. Okay. If he's out there, you know, I don't think he's 100% rostered. He played nine games last season. He averaged almost seven targets a game. Uh, and, you know, this is Mike McCarthy just yesterday saying, quote, Gallup will take a full slate of reps this week. We'll give him every opportunity to get ready. It's not a – I don't know that it's a great matchup. Hard to say. Like, the Giants defense, for all the Giants jokes we want to make, they're 2-0, and and they have they – have, now, the defenses they've shut down are the, are the, are the, ti- the, are the Titans, yeah. right, are the Titans and the Panthers, not exactly murderer's row here. But whatever, like – they might have a decent defense. Gallup, to me, especially without knowing how many snaps is he going to really truly play, it'll be sort of a feel situation here. Does he have a connection with Cooper Rush the way that Noah Brown does? What does this look like? I, I would like to have Michael Gallup on my roster and on my bench. I'm not starting him this week. Cowboys season looking up all of a sudden. It looked completely done after week one, but they get the big win over Cincinnati as touchdown dogs. Now they're only one-point favorites. Cooper Rush is going on the road in primetime and is only a one-point underdog. 
And uh, look, they're plus 550 to win the NFC East. I don't think they're going to win the NFC East because Philadelphia will, but they've got the same odds as the Giants on BetMGM, and I would much prefer the upside of the Cowboys just because Dak comes back, and uh, I just don't think the Giants are particularly great. Yeah, I mean, if you're if you're sitting there between those two, but I, I think the Eagles are winning this division, barring some sort of miracle. Speaking of miracles, yeah. Brian Robinson back in the practice field for the first time Wednesday after being shot that, that horrific... I don't want to call it an incident because that makes it seem insignificant, but episode. Like, I don't know how you describe it of the fact that like this awful situation that happened to Brian Robinson, thank God he's alive. Thank God he's okay. Like you're not even thinking about football. You're just like, Hey, I hope the young man is okay. And not only is he okay, he's back on the practice field. Jay. Yep. He's back on the practice field as, as for those of you watching live on Peacock right now, or seeing the footage that we have of Brian Robinson back on the practice field the first time since August 28th. Now, he is currently on the NFI list. He's out at least the first four games, but he is eligible to return to the active roster in week five against Tennessee. Looking, seeing how, how high the commanders were on him in the preseason, how explosive this offense has been. Like the problem is the defense, not, yep. the, not the offense. Um, I think Brian Robinson is worth a grab and stash if he's out there in your league and you need some running back help because it appears that B-Rob, as apparently only I call him, <laughs> will be back sooner rather than later for your Washington Commanders. My Washington Commanders, yeah. No better comeback story in the league than Brian Robinson. And Antonio Gibson looked great in week one, not as great in week two. So I think there will be opportunity for Brian Robinson. My guess is initially they ease him back in and it's a three-headed monster. I think they prefer Antonio Gibson in the passing game, a converted wide receiver from his days at Memphis in college. And they are going to be throwing. This is going to be a throwing offense. They like the versatility. But I will say that one of the concerns about Antonio Gibson last year was ball security, especially oh, yes. in close. And so Robinson, who was quite the finisher at Alabama, I think there's a chance over the second half of the year he's sort of the early down goal line back for yep. a good offense. Yep. I and mean, the, the commander's off defense is brutal, but... Uh, on the uh, on the offensive side, they're going to score a lot of points. Probably yep. just not this week against the Eagles. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBC Sports and RotorWorld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched, or at least being too lazy to click out of it after the you know autoplay just kept it going. So either way, thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen. And now I'd like to ask you respectfully, 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 okay, respectfully, please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news, fantasy headlines from Rotor World, and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.